And we're going to talk a bit about kernels now. So what exactly is a kernel? An alpaca kernel contains the algorithm uh, you want to accelerate, and it's, it's usually written on a per data element basis. So uh, if you, for example, want to add a bunch of numbers, you just uh, put in A plus B equals C in your kernel. Alpaca kernels specifically are functors, which means that they are function like C++ structs or classes. Uh, I have a, uh, the hello world kernel copied to the right here, so we can talk about the syntax here. Uh, don't worry about this template parameter type name ACK right now. This is part of a later lesson. Right now we're just going to cover the general Apaka kernel syntax here. An Apaka kernel functor always has this operator here, which needs to be uh, annotated with the Apaka uh, function ACK specifier in the beginning. This tells the compiler at compile time that uh, this is going to be transformed into an actual kernel or a device function later. The operator or the kernel must always return void. There are absolutely no return types from a kernel. And this operator must also be a const function, meaning that it doesn't, uh, that you can't uh, change any member uh, variables or so of the, uh, Hello World's kernel struct. So what's exactly the difference between a kernel and a thread? Um, a kernel basically is just there and it's an algorithm and it is executed by a number of threads. Threads on the other hand are all ex uh, executing the same algorithm for different data elements. So thread zero will apply kernel the kernel to data element zero, thread one will apply the kernel to data element one and so on. So in short, in the kernel, you define the algorithm and in a thread, the alg algorithm is applied to something. This is also illustrated here on the right hand side. As we have seen, threads are mapped to cores and you typically have many more threads than cores available. This requires some, so, some form of thread scheduling. However, the thread order is unspecified from the programmer's point of view, which means that you also cannot control the order of uh, the processing of your data elements. They are, uh, the, the order of processing of your data elements is totally out of your control. However, you also need to uh, take into account some hardware specifics because thread scheduling works a bit different on CPUs and GPUs, for example. A typical CPU of uh, today consists of multiple cores. And if you have simultaneous multithreading enabled, you might have more logical than actual physical cores. And the alpaca threads are then executed by these logical CPU cores. On a GPU, the layout is a bit different. A GPU consists of multiple streaming multiprocessors, or SM. And each SM itself consists of multiple cores again. And alpaca threads are executed by the individual SM cores, not the uh, SM itself. 